Hello everybody and welcome back to Inconsistent Gaming. Today we're going to be doing something a bit different. I'm going to be doing post commentary on this little whiteboard animation video talking about whether video games are good or not. And of course being a gaming channel my opinion is that video games are very good for our society and they help us in many different ways. Now of course there's always two sides to an argument. There are people that think that video games are bad as well. Uh, many parents think that their kids shouldn't play them because there's violence, sex, drugs, and whatnot, and granted, young kids should not be playing. But they also think that they can be a waste of time or detrimental to towards their mental growth, which is just not true at all. Now, of course, video games started out very, very simply. They were stuff like Pong and Galaga, where it's just point and shoot, and there's nothing really to learn from it. But as time went on, uh, they grew into puzzles and stories and stuff that people can relate to and grow from. Um, they they developed a lot like uh, movies and film did back in the early 1900s. Uh, back when films first started, it was not it was nothing really complicated. It was just a moving picture. That's all it was. But they grew into something that makes a statement in society. It it's a story that people can relate to and learn from, and it gives morals and it just helps you learn. But today, video games, there's there's just so many video games around today. Two out of three out households will have some sort of video game console, whether it's Sony, Microsoft, PC, stuff like that. And people also thought that video games stress you out, make you mad, but and stuff like that. But 85% of gamers nowadays, they think that it makes, it relieves stress, it makes you happy. It, it's a way to wind down from your day. Video games also provide jobs, they provide learning opportunities, motor skills, stuff like that. And a lot of people nowadays that grew up with video games, they're a lot better at problem solving than people were back before video games. It's a, it's a way to... it's an early growth mechanism. Now, I'm also going to be incorporating another part into this video, and we're going to go over to an actual gameplay commentary, stuff that people on my YouTube channel here are used to. We're going to go into Minecraft. I'm going to show you specific ways that Minecraft can help you learn. Alright, so here we are in Minecraft. Now that things are slowed down a little bit, I'm actually commentating while I'm playing and don't have to talk so fast. I was in the very beginning part there, I was talking at the speed of light, trying to keep up with the video to make everything move quickly and not look really boring in the whiteboard animation. I've already edited that part and it seems to be going alright. But now I'm, I'm just gonna slow down and clarify on some things that I said and then I'm also gonna show some reasons in just just Minecraft, one video game out of millions that there are that make video games so great. So one thing with Minecraft is it's it's artistic. It's it's a game that gives people so many options for design and it's just a it's a process that it's good for people to have. It's good to have an eye uh, an eye for detail. It helps with so many parts of your lives. It it's a good skill to have. But there's all there's that building aspect in Minecraft. But then there's also there's uh, there's this stuff called redstone that's kind of like electrical wiring. So if I walk in here, this little platform here, this is a sort of makeshift elevator. So you stand here, you press this button, and you get fired up here. So that's just a small amount of redstone there. Um, the, the, the redstone stuff can get a lot more complicated, and the system that it uses to make that stuff, it's actually based on mathematical logic gates. So if... If kids or just people in general have an early understanding of that redstone redstone kind of stuff, then that gives them a sort of gateway into more complicated logic puzzles that they can actually use in jobs, whether it be with computer stuff or or just normal mathematical problem solving situations. And then I there's no real um, examples of this in in this server here, this server that I play on often. Um, but there's Minecraft is one of the most uh, easy to mod games out there. It's 
the uh, files that are in the background in the zip file are easy to are easy to modify and change to whatever you want them to be, allowing a lot of a lot of different uh, modifications for Minecraft. Like you can turn them, you can turn Minecraft into an RPG if you want. You can you can give skill classes. Like all all we have right now is we have this inventory. We have the screen for uh, for the server to see who's online. Pause screen with a bunch of options. We but you can add so much more to this. You can make this game whatever you want it to be. You can give it a story. You can make it. You can make it any kind of game you want it to be. On top of that, it's a never-ending world, and the community is so large. You can you, lots of people make friends in Minecraft that last years and years like the people on this server i've known them for about a year now and there's some of the people that i feel the easiest talking to i i mean i don't know minecraft is just a good thing to have in your life now let me just clarify on some of the things that i said earlier um some of the things i was saying in the heat of the moment like just trying to keep up going fast and i don't think i exactly worded them right um, when I was talking about the violent sex and drugs and all that sort of stuff, I said that uh, kids kids shouldn't be playing playing that. And what I meant by that is they shouldn't be playing the games exactly like that. There are tons of games out there that don't involve them at all. Like Minecraft, it can be whatever you want it to be. But at at the core, this is what it is. It's it's basically virtual Legos, essentially. So kids can be playing this kind of stuff. They can be playing Nintendo games. Nintendo games are largely learning opportunities. They're problem solving. They're stories. They're characters that kids can grow up relating to and coming back to when they're older and just having a nostalgia factor there. So kids shouldn't be playing stuff like Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto, stuff that a lot of them are playing nowadays and it's causing problems and that's a lot of the reason why parents are getting angry. But they the the parents should be they should be deciding what their kids play they need to they should be the one buying these video games first of all and when they do buy them they should be looking at the ERSB tag on the back of it it gives a rating it gives whether it's rated E for everyone T for teens or M for people 17 and up that's that's just how it should be. People shouldn't be just picking up games because their child is screaming saying they want it. That's not how it should work. If they're doing that, then that's their own fault. It's a lot it's a lot also that's what I wanted to talk about with movies. That's that's how it is with movies too. You don't just let your kid go to any movie you want, and if you do, you probably don't care what video game they're playing either. So you wouldn't be complaining about it. You need to think about video games the same sort of way you think about movies. They all have their unique their unique uh things about them they all some have drugs some have sex some have violence and then a lot of them don't so you can decide which ones you want your kids to watch so personally i've grown up with video games i've been playing them since i was about four years old and my neighbor showed me uh the n64 so and I was started playing like Mario 64 and Mario Kart and stuff like that and it was just my favorite thing from then on out and I'm still playing them now and I can't imagine who I would be or what kind what kind of life I would be living if I did not play video games then like would I would I still be playing them now if I didn't start back then I I don't know but they've opened me up to a lot of social opportunities and it's sort of given me a different way of thinking about media and about about people in general. It's also I'm pretty good at problem solving. <laughs> and I'm I'm attributing a lot of that to to video games cuz I've had the opportunity to solve tons of different kinds of puzzles that were frustrating and I've I've spent hours trying to figure out just like one silly little puzzle in a video game but it's that ki that's the kind of stuff that gives you a different way of thinking it's it will give it's what gives you the bigger picture in life this for example this thing that i'm working on here this gigantic project it's based off of the, 
the most nerdy thing I could think of, the Triskelion from Marvel's Captain America. You can see here that there's a center part here, and then it's connected at the base to three different parts, which is a basic, it's a basic uh, figure that you see in a lot of cultures that's stuff in like Buddhist culture, Indian culture, Chinese culture, Hindu culture. It's it's just one of those things that it symbolizes three different pieces coming together as one. But it this this is obviously really convoluted and I had I had the idea for the whole layout in my head. It's not I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't start playing video games at a young age. This is I don't know. This this is the kind of thing that I attribute I can do because of video games. I can lay out all these convoluted plans and keep them all in one place and make sense of them in my head. Alright, so one more thing I wanted to clarify. I said back when I was over at the uh, Triskelion thing that I'm working on that I've, I've learned a lot from just the waiting process, like the, the tediousness of solving the puzzles. There's also stuff like this where I've had to dig out tons and tons of area for a project and it's just something that I'm continuously working on not only do video games they they get you to solve these puzzles and fix issues like that but it gives people it gives people that grew up with these sort of puzzle solving games it gives them a kind of patience so that they know that they have things take longer than you expect to deal with them. They take longer to solve them, take longer to fix problems and complete projects. Video games give that give you a realistic sort of outlook on on patience that not everything will go the way you want it to and you will have to wait and you will have to go back and look at what you did and fix whatever whatever you want to do, whether it's whether it's like it's alright, but you want it to be better or it's just plain wrong. You have to go back and fix it multiple times. You have to sit there and wait for other things to be finished before you can complete the project that you want to do. It if you, if you're playing the right games and well, I don't know if that's the way to word it. Most games have a sort of patience aspe aspect to them in some way or another. But if you're playing these kinds of games, you you have to develop this patience if you if you want to play them. So to sum it all up, uh, just refuting the opposing argument here, the one that says that there's violence, sex, and drugs. That's your decision for your kids. You can you can monitor that. That's what parents do. You don't just say no video games at all because that is that's damaging. That can be damaging to the mental growth. I mean, you can raise your kids however you want, but video games will help. It's It gives them patience. It gives them problem solving. It will develop their brains faster than it would otherwise. I mean, of course, there are other ways you can have them do math puzzles and read and stuff like that, but they'll also enjoy themselves while they're, while they're playing these video games. They won't even realize how fast they're developing while playing them. Oh yeah, and then there's also that thought, I don't know what this this whole thing is about, it's it's crazy to me. But some people think that like there's the school shootings and and stuff where there was like a movie theater shooting and stuff like that and people attribute it to video games like Call of Duty and stuff like that. Well, you know, there's movies a lot worse than Call of Duty and other uh first person shooter games than that. Why what makes that any better? I am I'm not sure how how that makes any sense because it's it's not a video game brainwashing them. Video games don't brainwash you to do anything. And it's not really a good simulation for like guns or anything either. It's it's a controller. <laughs> it's not the same thing. It's it doesn't give you a desire to go out and shoot someone either. It's that's that's just not how it works. You need to think about video games the same way you do movies. They're not going to brainwash you to do anything. Okay, so I... 
So thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go through this portal here and it'll end the video. But if you have any other concerns, if you think there's another argument for for against video games, then I'm going to post this on YouTube so you can just put it in the comments below and I will try to address them. If there's enough, I'll make another video. Um, but uh, that's going to call it for today. So thank you so much for watching. And bye bye.